Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Circle Phones Ask Me Anything. Um, I am Teresa Micheletti, our marketing and social media manager, and I'm very excited that you are here to watch and to learn from um, amazing designers. So I'm going to bring them on soon. We have with us three designers from our um, enclosure contest, which is almost over, but not quite. You still have a chance. Um, so we'll be talking through their designs, their process, and anything um, anybody wants to ask. So first off, though, I'm going to bring on our CEO, Christina Sear. Hi, Christina. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, so she's, our, of course, the one who spearheads all of this. Um, and then I'll bring on oh, yeah. <laughs> one of our designers, um, Joseph. Hello, Hello. welcome. Hey, How Joseph. Good, good. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm Joseph Bransick. Um, I am a artist. Uh, I've been doing digital arts for almost 30 years. Um, started on the drawing board and have uh, moved my way through every, pretty much every piece of software that's out there. Um, went from video graphics to uh, CG vehicle stuff. I live here in Detroit. So we transitioned uh, using, instead of going out on photo shoots, we did uh, lots of using CAD data and uh, generating the photography from that CAD data. So um, we were, you know, using render, um, big render farms and things of that nature. And I, so I've been doing 3D for a very long time. Uh, the uh, 3D printing, uh, grab my attention once it became a desktop thing i've had my i've had one machine for about seven years now and uh i've done quite a bit with it and i've, I've really enjoyed using fusion and rhino and zbrush and you know blender and tools like that for different processes so uh yeah it's just been great i just love it and this program this this contest once i saw it it was it was kind of up my alley to, to be able to dig into something like this and, you know, and use it as a learning experience also. So that's yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, love it. Love it. I'm going to bring in another of our designers. Welcome. Hey. Tim, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm looking forward to learning more. <laughs> well, um, I'm a longtime friend of Christina. We've known each other for I don't know. <laughs> don't say, don't say. <laughs> Many decades. We'll just go with that. Um, and uh, I'm a software engineer in here in the Seattle area. Uh, I've just been a sort of a uh, tinker maker for the longest time. I originally, when I was in high school, I thought I was going to go into like uh, movie miniatures. And then about the time you start thinking about college, everything started going digital. And I'm like, eh, I'm really more practical and uh, and so I switched tracks and and then I was going to think I was going to do architecture. But then somebody said, well, you know, you got to go to school for like as long as a doctor to be an architect. And I'm like, well, OK, computers, then it is. So, <laughs> but uh, I've been tinkering around with 3D printing uh, you know, it's like six, seven years now. Uh, I saved and saved and saved and bought my first printer, which is a, a TAS 4 that I've relentlessly upgraded. So it's just, it sits just short of their, their current offerings that they, that they have. And, uh, and I've gotten a couple of other ones. I bought a, I bought a little resin printer here, uh, about a year and a half back. Uh, it's not the greatest one, but you know, it does, does the trick. And, uh, I just got my, my newest one, which is a Snapmaker two, which has a laser engraver and a CNC on it as well as a, uh, as a printer. So once I burn through all of my 2.85, I'm going to convert the TAS over to a 175 so I can just have one one thing, uh, one mm -hmm. type of filament for all the fused uh, deposit. Yeah, that's uh, but yeah, it is. It really is. But, you know, <laughs> off. I mean, you could see over here, th those are all boxes of parts, but they're all, yeah. fil they're all filament boxes, and I've got more and more. Anyway, so I haven't really been designing a lot of stuff late uh, for very long, and I started out with sort of taking other people's things and throwing them into Tinkercad and sort of cutting stuff off and mashing things together. Uh, and then uh, I think it was uh, Maker's Muse or 
another Australian designer said, you know, just start doing this, make it, make yourself a coin, a maker's coin. And that was basically what I started with was I started designing a maker's coin. And, uh, so this is, it's oh, hard, wow. it's hard to see with the bright light, but, uh, I started with that in fusion 360. And that's how I kind of started getting into that. And I've made a separate design. This is like a poker chip of the same kind of thing. I know the lights wash it all out, but I don't have good, good colors on that. So I kind of took that as the inspiration for this phone. And I really didn't, you know, Christina told me about it. I'm like, yeah, okay. All right. I'm not really a designer for this kind of stuff, but I'll take a look at it. And it wasn't really actually until Joseph put his first couple designs up. And I'm like, Oh, okay. All right. I, I gotta get off, I gotta get off my hands and get, get some work going. And, uh, <laughs> and I did three designs that I didn't like didn't, that didn't turn out, uh, because I was trying to go with the, the gear all the way around the outside, but you got buttons and slots, and mm -hmm, so I just mm -hmm. I went for the abbreviated uh, look that uh, that yeah. ended up in the design that I did submit. Awesome! And then, and then I see these new ones that have got all this nice reinforcing inside. I'm like, oh yeah, that that would have been a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I look forward to to kind of diving deeper into your design yeah. soon. Yeah. All right. And our last designer who's joining us today. Hello. Welcome. Hey, hello. Good evening. All the way um, from Germany. Yes. Um, I hope it's not a problem if I uh, um, make it a little shorter. I'm a little bit not nervous. Not a problem at all. Um, so other than uh, the other uh, two here, I'm very new to the whole 3D business. Okay. Uh, so I was a carpenter before. So I always liked building things. Uh, then I... Um, when I uh, went to uh, uh, made a bachelor's degree again for media te uh, technology and yeah. during that time uh, I made a 3D scan and printing uh, course on uh, on yeah uh, uh, that school and uh, yeah so um, how, how do you say I can uh, during an accident I cannot uh, no longer work as a carpenter okay but I still love to build stuff and building stuff in 3d on uh, your computer is very nice okay it's it's uh, it's very appealing but the problem is you actually want to touch it and that what yes. you can do <laughs> that what yes. you can do with uh, 3d printing so um i made my batch, uh, bachelor's exam uh, for, for that so uh, i had to reconstruct a building okay that was torn down and then I had to make a bra sculpture out of it. And yeah, so that's how I came to, to printing. Uh, and right now I'm working since about 10 months in a company that makes um, models for archeology span and animations and uh, so videos and everything, uh, beautiful renderings. And uh, one part of my uh, job there is to make 3D models of uh, uh, statues of saints or, or cathedrals or something. The only problem is we don't print in our company. I, I'm only there to prepare them and then we uh, uh, give it to another. Uh, so that's a problem I really want to be, uh, uh, want to be able, okay, I want to, to uh, try a little uh, myself how to, yeah, <laughs> how to exper uh, uh, experiment with, uh, with the three printers. I don't have one here, so I need to, uh, yeah. Um, I, I can only build on the PC right now. Right, right. Well, fingers crossed for that, that end. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, we are so glad that all of you are here um, and looking forward to to learning more and, and hearing about your process. Um, let's start with, just because, let's start with Joseph's. Um, so I'll pull that up. Here we are. And just kind of pull folks out so you have your picture a bit bigger. Mm -hmm. All right. Tell us all about it. Okay. Um, this particular design, uh, when I uh, did the initial design, I wanted it to work in either left or right hand. Uh, that was pretty much the whole concept behind all of the designs is making sure that that was possible. And I know with the Android, you know, if you were left-handed or right-handed, you could grasp it, grasp it this way or rotate it and grasp it this way. 
and hopefully the screen would orient based on um, you know the internal triggering systems um, and so it was you know something I could grip grab hold um, and I built a lanyard system in in the bottom of it so that you could run a lanyard through it um, I'd seen some designs and I uh, there were beautiful designs so many people creating some amazing stuff and they had their lanyards as a loop and I and on the outside and I and knowing 3d printing the way I do um, that's going to break almost immediately so I designed it so it would actually go inside the structure and I built an internal structure um, that allowed that infra that lanyard to go through it um so this design yeah that was pretty much the concept behind this design you know um yeah so we can move on from okay. that okay well, i figure I'll, I'll just thumb through kind of the the images you submitted because yeah. there's different I, ones it's the same thing i wanted you to be able to grasp it with sorry grasp it with your fingers around it so i built mm -hmm. it so that uh, your fingers would kind of lock around it um and you know i i thought it was fun to make it in a almost um shape of a flower you know um that was really the kind of concept behind it um these designs had um a built-in um texture i don't think you could see it here but if you if you have a chance to look at the image, there is a texture built into all the designs that um, when you print it, they're they're going to print with that information in it. So mm -hmm. that was this particular design. Um, and this one I like, this was my first um, go at a concept. And it was the same thing, being able to grasp it with your hand. That was kind of the big um, getaway with this one. Um, it has, you know, very smooth edges to it. Uh, being that I did not relocate the battery, I wasn't able to get a lower profile with it. I would have liked to have done that. Um, it just wasn't something I, I did. Um, that's my own fault. And uh, but this one, I I really enjoyed the uh, the color scheme. Um, uh, I also did this, this particular piece, uh, when I painted it, I painted it with a material called, uh, uh, Plasti Dip and Plasti Dip comes in a, uh, a spray form and it has a grippy rubbery feel to it. So that was kind of, uh, another thing I really enjoyed, um, is playing around with those particular parts of the design um and i really really liked you know the color scheme mm -hmm. um, and the access access ports that are on the sides here are cut in so that you can you know get those cards in very easily um and other ports too the uh, mm -hmm. being that these designs aren't form fitted to the internal structure um there was there had to be a lot more clearance for you to be able to move and put a, a thing into the ports uh, like the mini usb um the uh and the cards that was that was essential with this particular design um still i think it still needs a, a bit more clearance and uh but, you know, we do what we can do. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is the inside. structures of each design. Uh, they're all very similar. Um, the What I had imagined, rather than having the, uh, the speakers facing outward towards, like, the back, if you look at the top uh, design, that, that top speaker mount, I thought maybe they would face inward. And so I, and that way it would create a little bit more of a depth in the, uh, the sound, um, much like how Bose runs their systems. It's not, 
engineered the way Bose is, but I thought maybe, um, so I put a, a, a lot of holes um, along the, uh, this one, this one had a lot of holes along, you know, different parts of the, the piece so you could hear and speak very clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I, like I said, I did not reorient the battery. I wish I had, um, some of those designs are just absolutely gorgeous that had done that. It mm -hmm. gave it a low profile and uh, a really beautiful way of holding, uh, the piece. Um, so, uh, these are f photos I shot last night of, um, each one of these printed designs. Um, and just, you know, a little collage of them put together. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing with me just holding them, um, allowing us to see it that way. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. And then did you want to go through that video that you uh, had? Totally up to you. Well, might, be, might as well. It's It'll be fun. So let me just transfer our, uh, my screen sharing into that one. Give me just a moment. All right, here we are. All right. Ooh. There we are. We don't need any more of that. <laughs> it's so funny. I've it. actually watched it all the way through. Fabulous. As always, thank you for being here today. Hang on. There we are. It auto played the next video. <laughs> like, oh, for those watching at home, I can just see Christina because we have all the images below losing it. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Um, Joseph, that was a great, that was great. That was beautiful. Oh, like I said, that was the first time I watched it all the way through because I just slapped it together two minutes before I uh, was online with you guys. So it is what it is. But thank you very much. Of course. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's let's bring um, let's bring Tim in. Yeah. Hi. Hi there. Joseph, thank you so much. I'm gonna pull you out so we can. But uh, oops, there we are. <laughs> Hi, Tim. How you doing, Teresa? I'm good. Let me just pull up your design. Um, here we are. And go through that one. Yeah. And just tell me when you want me to to move the pictures along. Yeah. So as I was, uh, you know, kind of saying in the in the intro for those that weren't here, I, I based it off a design that uh, that I did for my first maker's coin design and you can kind of see the logo that i came up with it's up in the corner and it's sort of based on a gear shape and uh i went through a couple of iterations before getting to this one that had the gears going all the way around but it 
it interfered with either buttons or slot placement. And, uh, and I just went, you know what, we'll just do something abbreviated. You've got the notch on the top where you get the, uh, the, the front facing camera and the bottom notches, you get, a, you can hold it with your left or your right hand. You get you kind of loop a finger on there. I mean, it's, uh, it's really sort of the first sort of uh, ergonomic kind of thing that I've ever done. I've done a lot of other uh, design things for, stuff that I needed around. Um, and, uh, I tend to do iterative processes. Like I'll do a design and I'll print it out and uh, see what breaks and move, move, uh, on to the next thing. Uh, I don't know what you can go into the next picture. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> oh yeah. So this just shows the front from the inside. And because I've, I've never really designed a technical thing like this, that's holding electronics, I just took the reference uh, drawings that were given out and used them sort of as a uh, as a tool to carve out the bits and pieces. So you can kind of see there. Uh, that's the you know the display is face is printed right into it, so it should hold it fairly snug. Uh, and uh, you know, luckily, places like McMaster Car have models you can just download, so you can see the little brass inserts that, that just got right directly from them and just imported them into the designer software and put them in place. And, um, mm. and uh, this is actually the first design that I ever did that uses uh, snap tabs. And uh, like I, the first time I printed it out and snapped it together and all, most all of the, all the tabs snapped off cause they weren't big enough. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so that's, I mean, that's how I kind of do my designs is I'll, I'll print it out. I'll see what breaks. I'll make another change and uh, and move forward. Uh, and I would have continued doing that, but you know, life happens. I'm actually one of the uh, lucky few being a software designer. I I have been working straight through this whole pandemic. Uh, I've right. only been to the, I've only been to the office twice, but uh, I still get up and go to work for eight nine hours every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so I haven't gone through a whole bunch of iterations. I only did, like I said, I did two designs before I settled on this one. I've only done like three iterations on this. Had I continued going, I probably would have put it, added in stuff and go on to the next pay, next picture. Um, like battery holders on the back. You can see my back is pretty flat and unadorned. It just has the, uh, the speaker holes and the microphone holes and, uh, doesn't have a lot of the uh, industrial design that some of the other ones that I'm seeing uh, are coming out with now, uh, which certainly make them make for a stronger design. Um, so, yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. And that's the, uh, th I think that was the first iteration w before I snapped, <laughs> before I snapped all of the, uh, all the tabs off by putting it together. Uh, at least I got a good picture of it before I broke it. <laughs> It was before afters. <laughs> yeah. So I think that was the second print uh, that uh, most of the tabs held together. I still lost a couple of them. So, you know, I still have a bit to learn about industrial design for, uh, you know, real life products, things like that. I love that. I appreciate the different angles. Yeah. So yeah. Well, can almost imagine they've got it <laughs> in hand. Joseph set a very high bar with his, with his <laughs> early entry in multiple designs and multiple angles. So, I mean, it, it was, it was kind of the, uh, the lead horse in the race coming in early and doing an actually fabulous job with his, with his presentation as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always, it's always fun to, uh, to see what has been submitted and since then what, what's come in later. I swear I open up, the, the contest page every day. And um, for those at home, you can go and look at all of these entries. You don't have to wait. Um, you just go and click the view all entries. Yeah, but it's fun to see, to see um, kind of the progression of who's got, who brings in what and. and right. Kind of really and a lot of my design that I, the stuff that I do is taking other people's work and making some modifications uh, to it so that it, it better fits the need that I need for it. And that's one of the, I think one of the great things about being able to do uh, in-house 3D design. You don't have to have, you know, supercomputers or anything to do this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. You typically can do this stuff on a laptop and uh, right. just move right through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so 
I'm going to bring in, because you just talked about like making it what you want and what kind of you need it to be, which is a lovely segue into Florian. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, a great segue. Thank you, Tim. I'm going to pull Thank up you. yours. We'll see you soon. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll just pull up yours. Um, because making making things what you need them to be. Um, is that the right one? Yes, there we are. Here we go. Tell us about <laughs> tell us about this lovely design. <laughs> okay, uh, so I saw your your uh, challenge. Okay, your contest, and I never thought about okay. Uh, phone could be something else like rectangular. You you see it, and you just okay. That's how a phone is, and everything. And then I saw it. And uh, I okay, I, I need to make something, okay? Uh, so I, I drafted some ideas, but the problem is, uh, so all my ideas were uh, were more on the design part because I most uh, mostly do that, uh, that okay? But mm -hmm. the, the thing is, with a phone like that, okay, I think it should be uh, more you. Uh, it should be. Um, not only a design thing okay it should be uh, there there should be benefits to what the phone has okay over a normal rectangular phone okay and so i thought okay but if i put this on this won't work because the accu uh, the the uh, battery would drain too uh, too too fast mm -hmm. if i uh, make this design then it would be too heavy so i was just uh, thinking about some ideas what i can to uh, can do okay and uh, yeah, then I was uh, at, at my job, okay? And somebody took again the screwdriver. <laughs> and then I thought, okay, I have my phone in the pocket. <laughs> that, that could be an idea. And so I just drafted it. So um, other than most of the designers here, okay, uh, it's printable, but it's not usable because I could not print a prototype for it. Um, I know there are a lot of things uh, I need to to add, like joints or stuff, uh, uh, where you can uh, can put actually all the uh, the cartridges out. <laughs> okay, um, but I uh, made it in uh, 3ds Max, so it's more a modeling software than uh, um, uh, 3D printing software or a CAD software. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and I thought, okay, I want to make something practical uh, that you you could use, and the, the thing is, everybody has his, has his or her phone always on hand, okay? But if you're outside uh, with your bike and, I don't know, uh, somebody, uh, something breaks, uh, breaks or you want just, uh, or you're on the building side and want just to measure something, I thought, okay, you, you don't always have tools on your hand, but you always have a phone. So I thought, okay, I combine uh, uh, the, the circular phone with uh, some tools. <laughs> okay to to uh and because of the round design okay i think it's already a little bit um more stable than a normal recta uh, a normal rectangular phone that yeah it falls down everything breaks um <laughs> sorry but uh it, it happens sometimes um yep. and so i thought okay uh, with 3d printing you can use a lot of different materials so you can make it very strong and durable uh you can make the form so i wanted i don't have much experience but i wanted to fit uh, that it fits in the hand uh, uh okay so i made uh, one flat edge so you can lie, lay it inside your palm and the round edge to to hold you with your uh, fingers uh, better uh, and then I thought, okay, you have this. I had a lot of tools idea uh, ideas what you uh, could uh, add. So I thought, mm -hmm. okay, uh, the thing everybody uses, or if you if you do something on a three D printer, if you make something on a bike, or I don't know, um, you always use wrenches. You always need a screwdriver and something. So I wanted to fit something inside. And as I told you, I'm, I was a carpenter once, so you need to measure everything. And then I thought, okay, I could just put a measuring tape inside, but it's a phone, so we make it di digital. So I <laughs> was just looking, okay, what's the smallest laser me uh, measuring device, what I can find? And then I tried to integrate it a, a little in the design. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Had, I, I had some ideas. The, the hole on the top is actually for the the bits uh, so you can use the phone as screwdriver i thought okay you make it a little stronger but as i 
say the interior is you you, you can optimize it a little let's just say it this way sure sure but i mean the concept is so is so fun and original yes and i had a lot of fun making it so <laughs> i thought i I saw the the because it was the first. I saw the design of Joseph, and it was so fast. And I thought there are so creative people out there. You need to make something. It, 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 it. And the thing is, as I told at the start, I'm I'm uh, not working for too long in that uh, business. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm I I saw it. Okay, I I want some chance to improve and everything. So why not make something that you never made uh, and and uh, try a spin on it so yeah um th that's about it i hope that that covers the first thing no it's mar marvelous yeah let's see there we are just want to make sure i get through all of the images i just made some renderings so um no it's I, great yeah. let's see and i'm gonna bring in everybody else and we can just kind of do a uh all together powwow chat. There we go. Thank you so much. The, I, oh, the, I so great to hear more about everything. That was awesome. Great presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, some of you kind of touched on this. So, um, but I'm going to ask for just a little more info if you don't mind. Um, what was it about this contest? Why the circle phone that kind of caused you to, to decide, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll what is it? Throw my hat in the ring, you know, give it a try. Um, what was it about this that, that piqued your interest? Well, I, I was in on the first Kickstarter that uh, Detour did uh, way back in, I don't know when that was, 2013, 2012? Seems like in 2016, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> and uh, so I went to one of the um, classes that, that they held and we put together the uh, phone based on the, the seed reseed uh, little 2G phone. <laughs> and, uh, and like I said, I've been friends with Christina for many, many years. And uh, so she said, hey, we're doing this this thing where you could win a printer, which was, you know, not, not first on my idea, but I'm like, yeah, I need to really start working on some, some new <laughs> skills in design. And, uh, and like I said, I kind of drug my feet and, Joseph sort of pulled the gun, pulled the, pulled the trigger and put out some really awesome designs. I'm like, Oh, I gotta get, gotta get going. Gotta get moving. So, um, you know, I pretty much felt obligated that since I've been supporting uh, detour and the circle phone for so many, so many years that uh, I need to help see this through uh, and that, that it's a friend and I can see them succeed all the better, all the better. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Joseph, what what kind of piqued uh, your interest? Yeah, for me, uh, most of the um, the challenges that I see or contests or things uh, that don't really pique my interest as much. And this one, as a design concept, I was just drawn into right away. Um, plus, you know, I would love to have a uh, a nice uh, 3d printer like that and so i you know i just kind of said okay well let's do it so i started doing some sketches and and then i jumped into fusion started playing around with some you know different things and thought concepts and and i just j jumped into it uh, i just thought i'd, I'd uh, give it a run and mm -hmm. uh yeah it's been fun it's been a lot of good learning experience I'm constantly in a learn mode. That's just me. I, uh, I, every project I do, I try to throw one little thing in there that allows me to learn something new. That's kind of been my mm -hmm. philosophy through my entire career. And it served me very well because I'm a pretty, I'm a generalist in the world of 3D. So I know a little mm -hmm. bit about a lot. Um, and if I need to do, you know, learn a lot about something more, I, I, I learn how to do it and, and then focus on that. So uh, this was a great learning experience to do uh, the internal uh, pieces and the external uh, uh, beautiful uh, design element. Um, and thank you guys for this opportunity. It was fun. Thank you. 
Thank you for entering. <laughs> so then I start with uh, saying thank you as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as I told before, I never had the idea, okay, you could, could make something else than the rectangle phone. Then I saw it. It was very interesting. The thought was on my mind the, uh, so for, for about a week, okay. I told some, some co-workers of, okay, what would do you design if you had to make a circular phone? And then, uh, yeah, after, after the week, okay, I thought, okay, now I, I told it so many people, I need <laughs> I need to make something like that. Yeah. Uh, and till then, there were, were already a lot of great designs, so uh, like uh, the one from Joseph. And I thought, okay, now I need to do something. Um, I'm not really a 3D printing expert because I don't do, uh, do it for too long. Uh, but I thought, okay, uh, give it a try, learn new things. That's the second reason I wanted to try uh, some new stuff. So I normally make statues, okay? And I thought, okay, trying something like a technical design, why not? <laughs> um, and yeah, so <laughs> the third reason was, of course, uh, it would be nice to have a 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So uh, yeah, and it was it was a, lo a lot of fun thinking thinking about all the ideas how it can work, and then yeah, just it's just okay, try try an idea and then just go with with it and see what you can do. And yeah, see where it takes you. Yeah. Um, what what was your coworkers like general? impression or like first response when you said i might there's a circle phone thing <laughs> what did they seem to think or like say about that uh so because uh, there were a different reason because in my company i know we do a lot of 3d but it's more, more focused on archaeology so some of the people are okay not too much technology and everything sure. just just keep it simple okay we have a phone we use that Okay. Uh, the uh, and the other ones were like me. Oh yes, you could do this, uh, this and that, and uh, you, you uh, yeah. So it was it was a little bit mixed. Okay, but yeah, there are different people. So of course. But it, yeah, most of them are okay. Okay, so show me. And till now, I have not showed them my uh, my design because I, I said I will show you when uh, when everything is done and and prepared for maybe for three D printing, but. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I pull it out of the bag and then I can uh, call, then they will see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, the first time that I told people or showed them you know, the circle phone, a similar kind of similar response. Some some were like, "Ooh, never thought of it," or a number of that type of response, and others were like. Mine works. I'm like, well, sure. <laughs> and <laughs> what more could it be? Yeah. So a similar experience there. It's true. Even when I started uh, talking about it, people were like, oh, that can't happen. <laughs> like, <laughs> and they didn't start taking it seriously until our, our first Kickstarter. Uh, and then, um, yeah. And so this will be our second uh, pre-sales campaign that will launch this year. So, but obviously I can make the, I can make it functional, but making it fashionable was really challenging to me. So uh, this contest we were hoping um, might elucidate, you know, not only ideas, but designers who maybe can consult and, um, you know, help us with various aspects. So I really appreciate everyone who's entered. And what I didn't anticipate was the goodwill of the contest. So for example, Joseph, I really thought it was so cool that you were commenting on other designs, on other people's designs. As soon as they would submit, you were like, oh, I really like this feature. I really like you know that feature. I, I thought that was- yeah. I think collaboration uh, is, is probably one of the things that uh, uh, recently, we 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 miss quite a bit. Yes. Uh, if you uh, and you can't work in a vacuum. If you do, you miss sight of a lot of things. And I found mm -hmm. that through my entire career, I've worked with. I've generally been like a managing um, team, managing person, and um, running big big programs. And 
And it's great when you can get everybody together and start brainstorming around and, and everybody's coming up with their, with different thoughts and processes. It gets yeah. really exciting, you know, the brainstorming. And, and I think that's great with the, this, the way that we're moving into the next, um, the next part of our design world is that we can all communicate the way we're communicating right now. Um, through Zoom or um, uh, Dream Yard, Yard, and um, it, it's 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 actually incredibly magical that we can do this, and uh, we can move files around as quickly as we do. That also is is absolutely stunning, stunning thing. So, I'm an old guy coming from an old world where uh, a terabyte drive was as big as a you know. A, a building yeah, yeah. so it, um, it's still true i remember uh a, a school uh field trip that we took and we got to sit on the cray machine they had the seats around <laughs> yeah right you sat yeah i don't know why they had the seats on there i, don't know. Why. I guess just so, they could. <laughs> that, was a, that was a nice added feature and then they could remove the seat cushions to you know do the maintenance i thought that was so clever <laughs> Christina, I don't know what this board thing board. is. The cray machine? What is <laughs> in the oh. What is that? Please stop. <laughs> I just gave away my age. Uh, yeah. So um, before everyone had computers, mm -hmm. <laughs> they would make these large devices called computers, but they would take up like an entire room. And the yeah. Yeah. cray computer was... Uh, one of the first computers that had the largest computing power in the world. So uh, okay. it was uh, basically the highest processing speed at that time. You know, yeah. now our devices, you know, surpass that. But uh, mm -hmm. at that time, it was super duper fast. And it had seats on it. <laughs> and yes. it had seats on it. It was cool. like a tower was in the middle. And then it had uh, and it was round, like round, roundabout seats. It was total. Was it? I want to say like almost nineteen sixties, nineteen seventy. Like yeah, it was like space age uh, disco. <laughs> yeah, space it was age. So weird. Yeah, yeah. They started up in the fifties, and uh, by the time people, Christina and my age, age, they were in the Seattle area. I think they they're still around. I think that uh, Hewlett Packard bought them up. Uh, so they're, they still make them, but they're not quite the, uh, the room filling, awe inspiring, uh, 2001, a space odyssey type computer that, that they used to be, Yeah, you know, when your memory, when your memory was the size of a, an alternator and had to be hand wound, then your computers had to be much larger. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for <laughs> in my day <laughs> exactly. but here we are in the new day and circle phones are up and coming check us out Christina <laughs> that's right and the fact that we can have phones in all different crazy shapes now uh, is really exciting we're looking forward to producing phones that are not only round but also uh, a hexagon phone, an octagon phone. Um, they do also make displays that are in the shape of hearts and stars. Yeah, exactly. Not the sharp edge stars, but the kind of the more cartoony rounded uh, with five kind of bubbles to them. And they fit really well in the hand. Yeah. So uh, especially, um, you know, for those who are looking for something a little different, um, I think that's... Uh, that's a great uh, way to explore. And then just making a device that fits. <laughs> is that my cue that I'm droning on? Oh, uh, hey, look at what you have. That's is my, that, first, my first Android, the G1. Is that a sidekick or nope. a different? It's an Android G1. Oh, wow. That's really cool. And I love how it has the side tab on it as well. Cause sometimes with the drop down side kick uh, models, you were kind of like, where should I yeah. put my hand? A collection of them. 
No, it was, uh, you know, one of the first Androids after everybody's like, Blackberry is God, and people still wanted physical keyboards on their stuff. Uh, I mean, I've got a Nokia flip phone around here somewhere, too, that I think it's probably holding up a corner of a desk somewhere. It's <laughs> a, little, like a little cement block. I have yeah. a question. Dina, have, have you um, uh, experimented with uh, more software on your, um, your system, uh, being able to uh, manipulate the look of the, 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 the interface and things like that for different... Uh, that's a really great question. Uh, Teresa, do you have happen to have one out? And I can, I can boot up mine if... I don't. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I'll boot you here in a second. I, I can do it. But, um, yeah, <laughs> thing, it was a pure... What is it? An effort here. of Hercules to be able, Okay. To be... Um, to actually do all of the internal design uh, for the phone, uh, particularly for that particular display. So the display driver and then the touchscreen driver and then the cameras drivers. Um, so that required a lot of work. So I have to say that I have not spent a lot of time on the software itself. Mm. We were blessed in that Android looked great on it. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I had, my love for Android has <laughs> increased by leaps and bounds because of the way that it can um, modify mm -hmm. depending on whether you have a very tall uh, LCD or if you have a wide LCD or if you have, in our case, it creates itself in a square and then our display lops off the corners. Right. So. Uh, what we've been working to do, so for example, you know, Android has the three buttons at the bottom. So mm -hmm. we've moved those in mm -hmm. and then the timestamp is up in the upper corner and we've moved that to the center so that you can actually see it. Um, we've also done some other manipulation of like notification displays and things like that. But um, as far as... Uh, more manipulations, we have yet to do those. So what we're really working on this season is making sure that that application window actually uh, fits within the round display. So, um, <laughs> da -da -da -da. yep. So, and then I don't know, maybe Joseph had to go take a break. Hi, Joseph. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I was getting a phone call from somewhere, but uh, oh, it's okay. So yeah. Teresa has an example here that you can see, um, and I know it's hard to do when I'm showing it to people facing. Yeah. It. Yeah. it's easy to do when you're facing it yourself. So, and then you can see the application drawer. So you just pull up uh, to get the application drawer, and then it has all your applications. And then, um, what is the resolution uh, of that? at this point. We, right, we have, we're really fortunate to have an excellent resolution on our liquid crystal display. It's 800 by 800. And oh, okay. a lot of mainstream phones have 720 by 1280. And so um, we are competitive with that resolution. Frequently when you have a round display, especially the newer ones coming out, they're either 280 by 280, 320 by 320. Uh, but some of the newer ones are coming out 480 by 480, but still they're not uh, as high of a resolution as what we have right now. So although we have to build around that foot that you all experienced at the bottom of the display, you know, that little kind of almost pyramid yeah. at the bottom, um, we call it either a foot or a chin even though we have that as part of the display to build around, we still have just such a crystal clear resolution and it's great for viewing images on it, whether you're going through your friend's Instagram feed or whether you're viewing a video on YouTube, um, it, it's very clear or viewing pictures, <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, it's really fun to play with and gorgeous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of advantages and there's still, you know, some challenges that we're, 
we're working through right now. Um, we could release it today. We would really want to make it a little bit better, particularly the enclosure, hence the competition. Um, and so we're so excited that there's been such goodwill among a lot of the designers uh, for that. Uh, another thing I wanted to speak about was our open source. So our last phone, uh, we tried to make the files for the enclosure available so that people could modify them. But uh, I think it's such a new experience and maybe Tim, you can give some feedback to this just to even create a phone physically with your own hands and to be able to pop those modules together and then make a phone call and have yeah. it yeah. You know, just in a few minutes, I think that kind of superseded like going beyond that to like, you know, transfer, transform the files. And as you all know, it, it takes many hours to design a different design. So, so yeah, I, I did do a, a faceplate design for that one, uh, that, that one as well. Right. Yes. Cause, Cause we had the models of the, of the, pieces in the screen so I, I again i, I used the screen models to, mm -hmm. as a tool to build a faceplate that it kind of fit into a little more so it didn't sort of rattle around um mm -hmm. so that was sort of the first iteration of working on uh circle phones for me um and i used some of those same tricks in this in this design as well I'm glad is, you brought that up. I totally forgot that you did that. So our uh, display was square and we hit it by a round bezel. But like Tim said, you could get more um, leverage if you just fit around this the square display, even though the whole case was round. Yeah. So um, yeah, his design for what clamped it down was, it was superior <laughs> to what I had, so. mm. <laughs> Very humble there. But uh mm. Florian, like, for example, how long did it take you just to model what you designed? Oh, uh, to, uh, so I already prepared the idea uh, for uh, over a week, what I kind of had in mind. So I uh, was working on it for, for a week and, and a little bit of Monday. So about two and a half days, let's say, with rendering and everything. So, um, yes. Wow. And Joseph, yeah. how about you? Uh like uh, Florian said, you know, that he, he was using 3D Studio Max, and that's a different type of modeling than yes. what we did. You know, ours is nerve based and it's more engineering based. Uh, mine, it took, for well, the first des few designs, it probably took about um, a week to have at least just the exterior of it, and then another, you know, week to start designing the internal structures um so that's why everything kept becoming you know where it was kind of like an iteration i kept uploading new uh replacing the old images with new images and um and then you know creating a presentation type of image you know that mm -hmm. takes time so yeah it was you know it was probably two weeks two two solid weeks and Tim, I couldn't believe what you accomplished in just three iterations. Well, that's three iterations of the design that I submitted. Uh, I did two other ones that are just sitting in the uh, trash folder because uh, <laughs> they didn't quite, I, again, when I tried to use all the teeth and it just didn't quite work out the way that I wanted. And so I just really went, all right, I'll grab this piece and this piece. I'll make a new design. That's one of the things about fusion is that uh, you can just pull chunks over uh, from one design to the other and, and just use that and go from there. Um, so, and that's, you know, it, it was, uh, it was, you know, many, many hours, I don't know, eight or nine hours of completely ignoring everybody in the house <laughs> while I worked on it. So, uh, which not that, not, I mean, that, that would sound worse, but these days everyone's all stuck together. So uh, everybody sort of needs that sanity time where they're not really paying attention to anyone else. So, um, you know, yeah, wasn't that all that personal, bad. That personal space and like alone time is, is um, hard to find sometimes. Uh, 
stuck in your one location. Yeah. Well, everybody, thank you so much. Um, I just checked our time and I don't want to um, wow. ask on your... <laughs> what was that, Christina? The time flew right by. I didn't realize it was... <laughs> right. I know. I know. I glanced over and was like, oh my goodness, this has been so marvelous. Um, Christina, is there anything else that I missed we, we wanted to know? I think we got everything um, amazing. I think we covered everything. Everyone was really uh, frank about listing not only, you know, kind of the brilliant parts, but then also the the challenges and then also what they would have, you know, changed, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if they had another two weeks and a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. So that was really cool. Yeah. So for everybody watching, thank you. Um, for those who watch this later, um, it doesn't mean you cannot ask us questions. Comment on the videos. They'll just be hanging out on our pages um, and we will be checking for comments and whatnot. So toss us a question um, or feedback on your thoughts on anything. Um, and we look forward to, to getting that and that additional engagement. But um, Loyan, Joseph, Tim, thank you once more, one more time. Um, and um, I hope everybody has a great day and um, and stay safe out there. Thank you. Thank you thank for joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you.